Hey, welcome back. It's Jason Walter here. In today's California housing market update, I have an update for you regarding housing affordability. This is because the California Association of Realtors, or CAR, just announced their affordability index for Q4 of 2021. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over that. And also I'm gonna be showing how the affordability right now is at its lowest levels we've had in many, many years. I'm also gonna be sharing the counties within the state that are the most affordable and which ones are the least affordable. Also have some very interesting data to share with you guys about how now compares to years past, especially during 2012, when it was deemed the most affordable. And with that said, let's begin today's video. And this is according to a brand new report that was just released from the California Association of Realtors, or CAR, about four days ago at the time of this video. So they said a tempering of home price growth combined with a solid increase in household incomes improved the affordability outlook for Californians in the fourth quarter of 2021. Um, if you actually Google California Housing Affordability Index, it gives you some headlines that can be a little bit misleading. So here's one that says, affordability improves slightly as household income grows. California affordability improves. California affordability drops to a 10 year low and housing affordability drops to its lowest level in a decade. So what is right? The headline here, of course, says we have a affordability improvement compared to the prior quarter. But what's really going on? I'm gonna be sharing some data regarding this. So the percentage of home buyers who can afford to purchase a medium priced existing, meaning not a brand new house, an existing house, an existing single family home, I should say, in California in the fourth quarter of 2021, inched up to 25% from 24% in the third quarter of 2021. I actually did a, a download of some data on the California Association of Realtors website, and you can see here, 25% of people within the state can afford to buy the median price single family home in California. So that means that 75% can't afford the median price home here in California. When you look at this, yes, the affordability has been improving over the past couple of months. However, in Q2 of 2021, or the second quarter of 2021, we reached levels of 23%, so a little bit less than we have right now, and we haven't seen numbers of this low since the fourth quarter of 2007. As you can see here, the fourth quarter of 2007, we only had an affordability index of 18% meaning only 18% of the people could afford the median price home in Q4 2007. Uh, what I want to point out though is that, yeah, affordability has been improving, but we're still at very, very low levels, um, almost at levels we haven't seen since 2007. So I want to point out to you guys, if you read headlines, it's very hard to get an indication about what's really going on. Yes, affordability has improved, but we're still at very low levels. The lower the number, the least affordable housing is in California. And have a look at this. The fourth quarter of 2021, when you compare that to the uh, peak of housing affordability, that means that houses were the most affordable. That was in the first quarter of 2012. We're at less than half that amount. So houses right now are uh, much, much less affordable compared to the peak we had in 2012. They go on to say the following, a minimum annual income of 148,000 was needed to qualify for the purchase of a $797,000 median price home in California. That's an existing single family house in the fourth quarter of 2021. The monthly payment, including taxes and insurance on a 30 year fixed rate loan would be $3,700 per month. That's assuming a 20% down payment and an effective interest rate of 3.28%. I'm gonna guess that the first quarter of 2022 is gonna see much lower affordability uh, because mortgage interest rates have been spiking. So have a look at this. So they took a 3.28% to come up with these figures here, but when you have a look at mortgage interest rates of right now, as of today, which is the 14th of February, mortgage rates have increased to 4.10%. That is almost um, a 1% gain in this year alone, about 0.8% increase compared to uh, January 1st of this year. 
When you compare it to one year ago, we're up 1.24%. That's a very big increase in a short period of time. And I know we get a lot of comments saying, oh my gosh, 4.1% is so low. When I bought a house in the 80s, my interest rate was 13%. I get that, but what were home prices in the 1980s? Very low compared to the home prices we have right now. In addition to that, mortgage interest rates have been increasing in a very short period of time. So we're up 0.8% this year alone and up over 1% since August of last year. That's less than six months. We've had an increase in mortgage interest rates by over 1%. So take a look at this. I want to kind of, kind of give you some perspective on this. I was kind of looking back to see when was the last time we had a mortgage interest rates increase by 1% or more in a short period of time. When you go back to 2018, let's go back to the very beginning of 2018. Let's call it December. December 2017, mortgage rates were 4.01%. It took almost a year to increase to about 5%. So in November 2018, about a year later, we had rates increase by 1%. Now we're looking at rates increase by 1%, almost 1% in about two and a half months. That's a big increase in a short period of time. And every 1% increase of mortgage interest rates, that causes a decrease of buyer's purchasing power by 10%. That's a big, big issue. And that's gonna be causing a further issue with housing affordability. In addition, you go back to, let's go look at 2013. So in April 2013, it was 3.5%. And then it took about until August of that year to increase by 1%. The big difference between 2013 is this is just after home prices absolutely tanked. This is near the bottom of the market. So home prices were much, much less in April or in 2013 compared to now. They did have an increase of 1% during that time period, but then interest rates fell off a cliff again, decreased again, and then as we all know, home prices increase as well. So just wanna throw that out to you guys, wanna make sure you guys are aware of all that. Let's read on to this report from the California Association of Realtors. I also have some data to share with you on a county basis as well here in just a little bit. With a median price of condos and townhomes reaching another record high in the fourth quarter of 2021, affordability for condos and townhomes dipped from the previous quarter. So for single family houses it actually improved slightly, but for condos it decreased. I'm gonna share some stats with you here in just a little bit. So in the San Francisco Bay Area, San Mateo County was the least affordable in the Bay Area at just 19% of the households were able to purchase a $2.1 million medium price home. 42% of Solano County residents could afford the median price of $585,000, making it the most affordable in the Bay Area County. In Southern California at 17%, Orange County was the least affordable and San Bernardino was the most affordable at 42%. I can never pronounce that. I don't know why, but let me know how you pronounce that. I don't know. In Central Valley, Kings County was the most affordable at 54% and San Benito was the least affordable at 27%. In the Central Coast, Santa Cruz County was the least affordable and San Luis Obispo was the most affordable at 22%. For the state as a whole, Lassen at 63%, meaning 63% of the residents within Lassen can't afford the median price home in Lassen. Uh, that was the most affordable county in the fourth quarter of 2021, and that was followed by Kings, Merced, Shasta, and Tuolumne. Lassen also required the lowest minimum qualifying income to purchase a median price home at $46,000. Mono, Orange, and Santa Cruz were the least affordable counties in the state, with each requiring at least a minimum income of $158,000 to purchase a house in, these, in those counties. All right, let me share how each of the major regions and also the counties within California, how they compare to the national averages. So have a look at this. So for the California single family home in the fourth quarter of 2021, the median price was 797,000. That gave you a um, monthly mortgage payment that would, be, that would include your uh, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Another word for that is PITA, P-I-T-I. That's $3,700 with assuming a 20% down payment. That would uh, be your payment approximately on a 797,000 house. Anyways, you need a $148,000 um, income in order to qualify for that mortgage payment there. When you have a look at condos and townhomes, 
you need $113,000 to buy a condo in California. So here's some major regions within California that they had to look at. Take a look at this. So San Francisco Bay Area, median price home in the fourth quarter of 2021, $1.25 million. When you compare that to the US, $361,000. California obviously is not the most affordable area within the US, especially when you look at stats like that. Look at that, $1.25 million home, that would give you a mortgage payment of approximately $5,800 per month, and you need qualifying income of $232,000 per year. You compare that to the US in general, that's $67,000 you need for the median price home in the US in general. So quite a big difference there. So here's some other mind-blowing stats for the San Francisco Bay Area. So in San Francisco and San Mateo, those are counties within the San Francisco Bay Area. San Francisco, only 21% of the residents in San Francisco could afford a $1.8 million medium price home in the fourth quarter of 2021. On top of that, you need $338,000 per year in income in order to qualify for a home there. In San Mateo, it was $390,000 making it the highest income needed in order to buy a house in that area within California here. In Southern California, San Bernardino had the lowest income uh, that you need, and that's $83,600, whereas in Orange County, you need $213,000 in order to qualify for a $1.1 million medium price home there. Uh, Central Coast, Monterey, you need over, or all these counties, I should say, you all need over $148,000 in order to qualify for a home there. In the Central Valley, uh, Kings County is the second most affordable county within uh, California for the fourth quarter of 2021. So 54% could afford to buy the median price home of $330,000. In Sacramento, about 39% is the number there, and our median price is $515,000. Of course, I'm a realtor here in the Sacramento area, and you need about $95,000 in order to qualify for that $515,000 home, assuming you have 20% down uh, available to buy a house here. In the far north, Lassen is the most affordable county within the state at 63%, and the median price home is only $246,000 compared to the Bay Area of... $2.1 million in San Mateo for the medium price home uh, there. Quite remarkable, big, big difference there. You only need $46,000 in order to qualify as well. All right, so that's how each of the counties within California fared, but I also wanna share some graphics here before we wrap up this video. Uh, so have a look at this. So Q4 of 2012 was our all-time high for housing affordability, I meaning it was the most affordable um, during that time period. And have a look at this. It has been decreasing. Also, it has an ebbs and flows, but has been decreasing more or less ever since. And now we're at levels at 25%, near record low levels, especially when you compare that to the uh, the, the nation as a whole. 50% of people could afford to buy the median price home in the, in the US, whereas we're about half that in California. And in California, we look back to 2009 to 2013, really we had about 45 to 50% of our housing affordability index during that time. So we're about half those numbers as well. As uh, obviously with home prices accelerating so greatly, housing affordability gets worse and worse. And because we're at you know, all time record highs for home prices and mortgage interest rates have been increasing greatly, that's gonna cause this number of 25% to plummet, in my opinion, we'll have to see. But I, I would guess that I'm gonna be making this video in about two months. I'm guessing that this number is gonna be far less than a Q4 of 2021 because mortgage interest rates have been skyrocketing. Here's the interesting graphic I wanna share with you guys. So this is a purple line here is Q4 2021, so just last quarter. And then the green bars here are Q1 of 2012. Uh, I made a mistake. So my, my talked about, um, the uh, peak of housing affordability, it really was in Q1 of 2012, not Q4. I think I misspoke there. In any case, a Q1 of 2012 in the US, um, the, we reached all time highs of 71%. That means in Q1 of 2012, 71% of the uh, residents within the nation could afford to buy the medium price home. Now we're at 50%. 
in California, it was 56%, now it's 25%. And you see the big difference here uh, based on these major areas within California as well. Here's something also found to be mind blowing. Here's the median annual income required during the affordability peak, which is Q2, Q1 of 2012 versus current. So for California during 2012, you only need $56,000 to buy the median priced home during that time. In Q4 of 2021, last quarter, you needed $148,000. That's a difference of 163%. In the Los Angeles metro area, it was a 150% increase. Uh, Inland Empire, 180%. San Francisco Bay Area, an increase of 156%. And look at this, the US as a whole only increased 110%. Uh, quite a bit less compared to these other major areas within California. Here's another interesting set I also want to share with you guys before we wrap this video up. The median, here's the minimum annual income required, and that's current versus last year. So last year, uh, we had $128,000 that's required to buy a home here in California compared to last quarter is $148,000. So an increase of $19,200. Um, when you look at the San Francisco Bay Area, have a look at this. You need 232,000. One year ago, you only needed 196,000. That's a difference of $36,000 in just one year. So here's a monthly principal interest taxes and insurance, that's PETA, uh, during affordability peak versus current. So basically this is your monthly mortgage payment during the peak versus a current. So Q1, or sorry, Q4 of 2021. So Q1 of 2012 for a California single family home, not a brand new house, uh, the uh, monthly mortgage payment during that time was $1,410 per month. Now it's $3,700 per month or a 62.4% increase in about 10 years. And you can see this big increase across all the major regions and also in uh, the US as well. You also can see this um, increase of monthly mortgage payments also compared to one year ago. So we have a 15% increase of California single family houses for the average monthly mortgage payment. For, count, for condos and townhomes, it's a 20.9% increase. It just goes to show how condos have been um, rising in values as well. And that's further causing issues with housing affordability. All these numbers, by the way, are over 18% compared to last year. Here's also something I want to point out with you guys. So here is housing affordability by county, and they also show uh, the US. So as we all know, about 50% of all residents within the, the US can't afford the median price home in the US. So that's 50%. But when you look at this, here's all the counties within California. Only two counties within California have more housing affordability than the average across the US. So that would be Lassen and Kings County are the only two counties that have a more that are more affordable than the U.S. Um, averages. On the other end of the spectrum, Mono, Santa Cruz, Orange County, San Mateo, Monterey, Santa Barbara, um, all are at levels that are far less than the national averages. Look at Mono County only has a 13%. Uh, figure here compared to 50% for the national averages here. So that is today's video. I hope you got some value out of it. If you did, please hit the like button. I greatly appreciate it. And also consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Hope you have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.